Hey guys, welcome back to Kingdom Business TV. Appreciate you joining me. Hey, in this video, I wanna talk about the four levels of entrepreneurship. And, uh, and we're gonna kind of build a bit of a ladder out so that you can see the progression. And my purpose of doing this um, is to kind of hold a bit of vision out in front of you, right? So that, uh, so that you can get inspired about a big bright future and, uh, and you can start to see the steps that you've got to go through between where you are now and seeing that grand vision come to pass, right? And we've got a little bit of show and tell that we are going to be doing here as well. All right, so let's get straight into it. When we talk about these levels, please, I want you to understand and I want to give you permission actually, whatever level you are at, out of the four levels of entrepreneurship, whatever level you're at today, I wanna say it's okay. All right, this is not about beating you up or saying you're not good enough. I wanna say wherever you're at today is okay, but just don't stay there, right? That's the caveat. It's about being okay with the level you're at today and then being somewhat uncomfortable and dissatisfied with it so that it wanna propel you on to achieving a higher level of success as a kingdom entrepreneur, all right? You know, like when you think about the Apostle Paul, um, we wouldn't typically call him an entrepreneur, except we know that three times in scripture, he kind of went away and, and built tents. He was a tent maker. So he, he definitely had his own side hustle or business, depending on how you want to look at it. But you know, one of the things that he said has always struck me, right? Philippians 3, 14, somewhere in there. He says, I press towards the goal, the mark of my upward calling, you know? And he was always pressing, always growing, always advancing, always pushing forward. If it's good enough for Paul, it's good enough for me, all right? So we're gonna put that into the context of entrepreneurship and build out the four levels using a ladder. All right, I'm gonna go to my iPad here and you'll be able to follow along, right? I've got it all written out here, so we're gonna, we're gonna kinda go through, right? So the, the bottom level here, the bottom level is the technician. Right, so like any time you've ever climbed a ladder, you have to start at the bottom, right? It's like, you, you, uh, I'm sorry, but you just can't start at a ladder halfway up. You have to go rung by rung. It gets very risky if you try and climb a ladder and start skipping rungs, all right? So, so we actually, we, we all have to go through the phase of going through all of these four steps. So we all kind of start as the technician. So I'm just gonna make a bunch of notes here about how that looks at each level, right? So the technician, they predominantly work in the business, right? Now that may be you, that may be you. That You might be, you might be sitting there and you're thinking, well, that's me, I, I have to work in the business all the time, right? And, and by the way, you have to. You, you've got to you've build some clients, you've got to do some things, you've got to make some money, right? Ultimately, you have to work in the business at this bottom level. And that's just a sign of where you're at. A couple of other things. Basically, <laughs> this, is, this is really interesting. Your output is completely tied to your input. Meaning that, you know, like if it's you and, it, and maybe and maybe it's you and, a, and another person on the team, but effectively you can't multiply the output. So the outputs that you can produce as a single operator or you know, in a small team of two or three is, is dependent on your input. You've gotta put all of the time in to be able to get all of the inputs out, all right? So by the way, this is the point where it's, it's earned income, all right? You have to, every single dollar, right? Every single dollar, that you make at this point here is because you went and, and did the work, okay? Again, essential, um, but hard, all right? So earned income only and, and you're very limited in the amount of money that you can make. Going back to, <clears throat> going back to the, the output and the input, the reason why you're very limited is there's only so much you can do, you know, in a 60 or 70 hour week right? There's only so much you can do in that much time. And some of you might be thinking, I do a 40 hour week. Well, I had a part-time job too once. All right. So there's only so much you can do on your own in a week, right? You know, you, there's, there's got to be enough time if, if you're a husband or if you're, if you're a wife, if you're a, if you're a father, like you've got to, you, you've got to look after your health and all this. So there's, there's demands on you in a week that you've got to fit in. So you can't just work, right? You've got to sleep, you've got to eat, you've got to do those things. Okay. So there's only so much output and so much income you can earn as a technician because you have to do all the inputs yourself. 
Um, here's a bit of a downside, right? Um, this level, for most people, is their comfort zone, okay? And that's the reason why they stay there. That's the downside. Here's what I would say to you though, the massive mistake of staying as a technician is it requires very little leadership. You've only got to lead you, all right? It's almost selfish, if I can be honest, right? To stay at that level forever. Basically, you can tap out at any level of the ladder, right? You can tap out and say, that's me, I'm done. This is my comfort zone and I'm finished. I would suggest to you that that's a really bad idea because your job is to grow into everything God's got for you. And, you know, he didn't tap out early. Jesus completed everything he was called to do and we would do well to be the same. So you can tap out and many people tap out a technician, right? They, they, they try and grow a little bit. It all gets hectic and gets heavy. They can't control it all. And so they just go back to being a technician. Just let me be on the tools. Do you know how many times I've had the conversation with, with, uh, with people and they're like, I put on a team uh, and it was just too much hard work. I've made more money by myself. Yeah, you made, you made more money by yourself in the first little period of time, but you weren't prepared to push through. You didn't grow as a leader to attract a bigger team and to get more outputs, okay? That's the reason. People get to the point where it's painful and they go back to technicians. So if that's where you are today, it's great, but please don't stay there. All right, so the next level up after technician is when we get to business owner. Now you might be thinking, well, I had a, I'm a business owner as a technician. Well, technically you are because you might have a proprietary limited company or a sole trader, but I would suggest you're not. You don't actually own a business at that point. You've just got a job that you're not paid by one person, you're paid by multiple with your clients, but it's effectively a slightly more flexible job. When you get to a business owner, what happens here? At this point here, you're effectively working in the business, okay, um, because you have to, but you also get to work on the business, right? As a business owner, by this time, you've put a few team around you, right? You've got a bit of a team happening, and so, at this point, going back to the inputs, outputs, the output is not tied purely to your input, right? Let's say you've got a team of five, six, seven people around you. Well, you're probably putting out three to four times as much output, sales, revenue, productivity, jobs, as you were when you were by yourself. You still contributing the same 50, 60 hours a week, right? It's the same input from you at the business owner level as it is at the technician level, but the outputs are multiplied because the team help you get more done, okay? It's starting to look a little bit attractive at this point. Um, one of the beautiful things here is that you, one of your roles becomes leading the team, right? Which I'm always a big fan of. Let me write that so it doesn't look like chook scratchings. Leading the team. Cool, that's pretty cool. Um, now, here's what I would say to you though, as a bit of a downside to the business, so the upside is you get to multiply your outputs and you don't have to multiply your inputs. Same input, more output, right? The downside is that of all the levels of the ladder is this one has the most pressure. Because now you, you are responsible for not only your life and maybe your family's life, but you're actually responsible for the lives of the people that you've chosen to employ and their families and so forth, right? So it comes with the most amount of pressure at this point because you know, you're know you kind of juggling a lot of things. Now, please understand, at business owner, you're still gonna have to be in the business, but it affords you the luxury of working on the business, being strategic, getting your heads in the cloud, coming up with strategies and pushing the business forward. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying this, hit the subscribe button below because I'd love you to get the alerts when we put out more content every single week. Okay, let's go a little bit further up the chain here. And let's go to the next level, which is when you become the CEO. So think about this a little bit, right? What does the CEO do that is different from the business owner? Well, I think the criteria of when you go from business owner to CEO, you know, one of them is the size of your team. That would be a bit of an indicator that you've progressed. But I think the main indicator that you've gone to CEO is that now you can take extended periods of time away from the business and it maintains itself or grows, okay? That's when you've got to the point where you're the CEO. If you can take a four-week holiday, a six-week holiday, or 
you know, four, four week holidays or whatever, like extended breaks, which means that you've systemized, set a team, leadership structure. You've got to have that in place to be able to, you know, withdraw yourself so you can go and do something. And then when you come back, you come, come back to something better than a burnt down business in a car park, right? If you've got that, then, then you've probably migrated to the level of CEO. So what happens here? Basically, you're the captain. Right? Now you think about what a captain does, captain of a ship, captain of a pilot, right? You know, basically they've got knobs and dials and reports and their job is to maintain, set the course, make sure everyone's happy, we're having a win, managing any issues on the way to the destination, right? That's the captain as the CEO. Their main role is to deploy cash and resources. So. They're, they're hardly in the business at all. And, 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 and let me just say, at the CEO level and business owner level, you, you may still want to be in the business. So please understand that this is not about saying you can never be in the business. Far, many, far too many of you are far too much in the business. But you're allowed, at these levels, you can go back and be in the business for a period of your time because you love it, right? If you genuinely love what you do, you may choose to go back and be in the business and do some of the products and services, whatever that is but you don't have to be, right? So your goal as the CEO is to deploy assets and deploy resources and say, okay, um, I wanna go and chase this opportunity. I'll, I'll raise the finance and we'll go and get that bit done and we'll grow the business that way. And then we'll chase this opportunity and then we'll go here and we're gonna handle this negotiation and so forth, right? That's what a CEO is doing at this level. Um, and then basically you get to just project manage, which by the way, please understand, is far less taxing on you than being a technician, right? At this point here, you literally get to, you know, um, deploy assets, deploy resources, and see projects come to fruition. But you know, uh, let's just look at a tradey situation. At the bottom, if you're a tiler, you're the one on your knees, laying the tiles, laying the grout, mixing it all. You've got a little apprentice, right? At the CEO level, right, you've got a whole team, you're out there, and, and as a project, you're like, Okay, uh, what do I need to do? I need to go and get vehicles for my entire team. That's my project. Deploy the resources, get them all, negotiate them, sign right. It, it, it's nowhere near as hard on your knees as the CEO, uh, as it is as a technician of a tiling business, right? So, so that's kind of like one of the reasons why you wanna try and progress up to here uh, and so forth, right? So then we get to this last level here, which is investor. And let me tell you, this one, is fun. This one is where you get most of the upside. This is when you get the, the biggest amount of output for the least amount of input, right? So at this point here, your job is to accumulate and multiply assets. And there is unlimited upside when you when you hit the investor level because because you've got you've got you got things rolling you've got assets you've got yield they're growing they're multiplying you've got cash flow off them and you can buy some more which means you get more you know it's basically four greenhouses one red hotel if you've ever played monopoly right things start to really you know expand and so forth right quick question for you guys what level of the ladder are you at right now? Put that answer in to the comments below for me. What level on the ladder are you at right now? Remember, we're gonna champion you no matter which level of the ladder you're on. It's okay that you're there. It's just not okay to stay there. All right, so at the investor level, right, you know, you, you basically, you don't worry about it taking extended breaks. At the investor level, you, there's very little you can actually do. You're acquiring assets. There's not a whole lot you could do to make that asset, you know, better or faster. Like, if, if give an example, if you were to go and buy a whole bunch of stocks in a blue chip company, for example, there's very little you could do to make that company more valuable, less valuable, help it out. You know, like you, you, you can't do anything. So, so it's it's incredibly time valuable because it takes a little bit of time and then and you can't add any value to it, you can't do much. You know, if you've bought a house and you've renovated it and you put a tenant in, there's not a lot you can do then, you just collect rent. So the inputs are really low, but the outputs are absolutely massive, right? Now, a couple of thoughts here are that the mistake a lot of people make, and perhaps even I did when I first started in business, 
definitely a mistake that most younger generation people do is they want to be an investor. They, 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 they think the ladder's upside down. They think, I want to be an investor. It's like, yeah, but the problem with starting out as an investor is you've got no money, right? You've actually got to go through the ladder to be able to do this well. And for example, I meet people all the time that say to me, I want to be an investor. My business is throwing off two grand a month profit, you know, that I could start to invest. I'm like, if you start an investing portfolio with two grand a month, it's going to take you your whole life to get hardly any assets. If you've got two grand a month, invest it back in the business, right? Go from a technician to a business owner by employing someone, and then you've got more money, more output, which then, then your business is producing three grand a month, and then put that back in. You know, it, listen, it's, it's probably not until you can start to take, I don't know, seven to 15 grand a month out of your business to invest that you're really gonna warrant doing it, right? Underneath all of that, you better to put the money back in the business to multiply the profits to be able to do it better, all right? So, so there's a couple of thoughts here, right? Don't jump too early and try and be an investor because it looks good and sounds good, right? Just stick to what God has for you and stay on the path and you'll do a much better job. These three levels here, by the way, these three levels here, um, the purpose of these is to build your cash cow. The reason why you progress from technician to business owner to CEO is to build that cash cow so that you can invest incredibly well. <clears throat> Another thought I've got for you though is, you know, I've often said to you guys, the pursuit of wealth is noble. And I fully believe that as a Christian entrepreneur, as a Bible believing, Holy Spirit filled, God fearing man, I believe that the pursuit of wealth is noble as long as it's about other people. The other reason though, apart from, apart from ending up with more money so that you can fund more projects and fund more churches, the other reason, that's the obvious reason, the other reason is that as you climb the ladder, right, you get to become the person that God had for you all along. When you decide to play the big game and go through this and, and chase down the dream of an investor, you're forced. The journey is so long and so hard that you're forced to refine your character and you're forced to lean on God. And so just as much as, as the money and maybe more, the reason why you want to go through this process is to become a person that looks more like God at the end. You will grow in his image far more through the mill, right, and, and, and through the valley and through the hardship of the journey than you ever will if you tap out early, take the easy road and play small. By the way, if you like that bit and you haven't yet hit subscribe, come on, show me some love on that subscribe button. That would be amazing. All right, a couple more thoughts here. Um, your comfort zone will be the killer to you extending your way through the ladder. Some people get to technician and they're like, this is my lot in life. I'm just happy to be a single operator and do that. I would say, great, it, it's great that you're there. Please don't stay there, okay? You're gonna make more money if you expand, maybe not in a three, six, nine, 12 month window, but over time, but it doesn't require the leadership, right? And the more people you've got and the bigger vision you've got, the more you step into it, the more you have to become and that's so valuable. Um, and then, I kind of want to do a bit of a, a picture here with these hats, you know, depending on where you are. As we all start out, we are the technician. And by the way, it's okay if you're the technician. We were all the technician. You take the largest companies in the world, once were one person grinding it out, and then they grew. Every big business started out small. So if that's where you are today, I want to champion you that you're doing a ripper job, but just don't stay there. When you're the technician, you're the person on the tools, you're doing the grind, you're doing the work, and that's a good thing. We all have to do that. But I wanna to say to you, at some point in your day, in your week, in your month, you need to start to remove the technician hat, and at some point, for some period of time, put on your business owner hat, okay? In the same week that you're probably wearing your technician hat for 47 hours, you need to find three hours to put on your business owner hat. Where's the vision? Where's the growth? 
What's the strategic objectives I need to be doing right now? Do I need to raise capital? Do I need to turn on AdWords? Do I need to upgrade the website? Should we be running Facebook ads? Do I need to recruit the process? Do I need some software, right? Business owner, and then once you've been business owner, and, and then you can go back to being your technician, okay? It's okay to go backwards. We're all gonna go through periods of time where we go up and down in our roles, and then you do this for a little, then you're technician, then you get to be the business owner for a little bit longer, and then you spend most of your time being the business owner. This is, where, this is where most of your time sits, right? What a blessing that'll be. You've got a team, it's a bit of pressure for you, but you're multiplying your output, right? But then you, you always wanna be aiming for the next hat, even if it's for a small period of your week, because then you get to be the CEO, right? So you might spend the bulk of your week as the business owner, but now you're the CEO. You're raising capital, you're deploying assets, you're deploying resources, you're picking strategic direction, you're able to get a break, take the family away, right? Get some, get some time to recalibrate. But you may not get to be the CEO all of the time. You need to go back down and be the business owner from time to time. I wanna tell you that that's okay. Because after a while, what's gonna happen is you're gonna spend more time in the CEO hat and you're gonna really start to enjoy it because the fruits of your labor are there, but we always wanna be chasing the next hat. So at some point in your week, you're gonna have to take this down. Now your business is profitable and you're gonna start to become the investor. And maybe it's only a short part of your week, but that's okay. You're gonna start to think about what's the assets? What, what, what entities do I need to start? Am I doing these kind of trusts, these kind of trusts, holding trust? Need to learn all about that so that I can then buy assets and asset protect myself, all right? And then you'll be like, okay, I can't get carried away as an investor because I've got a business to run. I need to be the CEO and that's fine because it's great to be the CEO. But you'll spend the bulk of your time like this and then after a period of time, you will get to make the switch and you can sit in the seat of investor for the rest of your life. Let me tell you that that's the ultimate joy you're gonna have. Not only are you gonna make more money, but you're gonna and, and have some fruits of your labor because you don't have to do all the input to get the whole thing moving. But let me tell you, at some point there, you're gonna grow into the potential that God put inside of you. And the worst thing I believe you wanna do is get to the end of your life and realize that God had a lot more seeds inside of you, but you never plumbed the depth of your potential and you never got to see them, but it's too late to ever go back. That's my little rant there for a moment. So that's my thoughts for you, right? The reason why I wanna cast this vision is because in my opinion, one of the things that we need to do in the kingdom of God for it to advance is fun things. Uh, yes, there is a whole school of thought that says God doesn't need our money. Uh, in my experience, maybe God doesn't need our money, but churches do, soup kitchens do, crusades do, buying other businesses so you can employ people and give people opportunities and jobs requires finance. And that's why we should be progressing through all of this and going for as much as we can. So it doesn't matter where you sit today, and how much of this hat you wear, and how much of this hat. And that, it doesn't matter how much time you are spending with each of these hats. I guess what I would say to you is spend more time in the next hat. Spend more time there, because it's gonna drag you up the ladder. You'll be more strategic. It'll be far more rewarding. You'll start to see the fruits of all your labor, and that's gonna bring you a peace and a joy that you will not experience if you stay small. Well, that's my thoughts. Put in the comment below uh, what stage you're at and I'll interact with you. By the way, just in case you're wondering, yes, I see all the comments and it's me that writes back to you, okay? So I enjoy that interaction. Um, and if you like this, then do me a favor, share it somewhere, right? Push it out somewhere. Let's get some more people validated, more people with vision, more people focused on the next level and we're gonna see the kingdom advance. Bless ya. No sleep, no rest. Might crash, might wreck. But first I stretch. Tell them run it off.